Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Space Engineers! I'm Marduk, the gamer, your host. This is Road to 10,000 Hours, episode 18! <laughs> Sorry about that, I, I wanted to have a little fun with the intro today. I was watching uh, Running Man last night uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was a lot of fun, man. But uh, today on the menu, got some exploration and uh, some glitches. Uh, I only managed to get one of them on tape, but I'm going to describe what happened a little bit later in the episode. And I found where I'm going to place that garage. It's, I really like the location, and I hope you do too. So, without further ado, rise and shine. Look at that sunlight. Ain't that beautiful? All right, let's get to work, baby. Let's get to work. So, uh, I flew down here from the mountain to take the nap because while there might have been sunlight at the top of the mountain, the top of the Twin Peaks, uh, there was no sunlight down here. So, yeah, I took a shot of that. Just what? Well, I'm a naturalist guy, all right? I'm a naturalist guy. It's, it's just a thing. It's, it's what I like. I like the beauty in nature. I was, I was watching some video on art the other day, and they were talking all pretentious stuff and how nature art is so cheap. And I'm like, cheap? That stuff took somewhere between a billion and 65 million years to create. Baby, that ain't cheap. Because we all know time is money, and 65 million years? Woo! Or however many years. I, I don't know. It's, it's in the millions. Or billions. That's cash money. That's fire. So, that's how I feel about the uh, whole modern art, modern art and nature art argument. They can go fly a kite as far as I'm concerned. Um, yes, so what I wanted to do at first is build my garage near the lake. Because that lake is where I'm going to do a lot of the uh, sort of static mining operations uh, moving forward through the series. But there's just not really a good flat place to, to, to set down. Because I'm going to build I'm gonna build a garage. The garage is going to have a workshop. Um, I have the sleep mod, so yeah, I'm going to build like a little a home. It... <laughs> Uh, it might look a little bit like, um, uh, how to describe it, it, it might look a little bit like sort of a modern guy's apartment where it's Spartan and all there is is an Xbox controller on the side, but hey, you know, I'm trying. So, uh, that, that's kind of like my idea. So, the lake, the lake is out. The lake is not going to be a thing. So I decided to go on this little exploratory adventure because I'm, I'm going to need a new iron boulder. That one that the mobile refinery is at is almost out. And then I'm going to need a, I want at least two, three more because the 10,000 plates at my current production, at, my, at the settings I have for the world, it's going to take me about 200,000 kilograms so that's 200 megagrams that's a lot of iron and the boulders so far i'm getting somewhere on the order of 40 to 50k out of each of them or uh, sorry so 40 to 50 megagrams out of them so i've crushed about two boulders and i might need about three more but then this happened Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. No, it's a plane. No, it's Lord Clang, showing everybody that the physics is, wow, just. <laughs> and then it lets go. Well, you know what they say, any landing you can walk away from. It's also, uh, <laughs> I guess I can fly with no motors. I can fly with no motors. 
No, that doesn't work. I was going to try to do with no handlebars, but uh, that does uh, that does not work the way I want it to. I'd have to workshop that a bit harder. But yeah, so congratulations. The, the boar pig went on its first uh, real aerial journey without much help. See, it's stuff like that that makes me really want to do like a crash, a car crash series where I'm just like, I'm downloading things off of the workshop. I should definitely do that. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get that for Wednesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday, so that would be tomorrow's video. You know, I think I'm gonna take a day off from the series and and have a Wednesday. I might do it like every every couple of Wednesdays or one Wednesday a month of just like crashing uh, a whole bunch of vehicles into the ground just to see it explode into a million pieces because i think that would be i think that would be kind of fun just kind of silly okay maybe not this wednesday i i probably won't do it this wednesday uh, i'll see i'll do i'll shoot video today and then i'll try for next wednesday but focusing back on the actual series at hand uh, i'm on the other side of the lake not the uh, not the trade station lake, but this is the lake with all of the uh, deposits, and I'm coming to what is about the flattest region I could find, and I started thinking, oh, you know, this isn't too bad. It's it's a little rough here, but I could I could clean it up. I could get out an excavator and sort of try to get that to flatten out lay down some blocks but as i'm going over the terrain looking for where i'm going to throw down this garage i just don't like any of it this whole area is just so hilly and every time i find a little bit of flatness it just kind of i i don't know how to describe it other than it it bowls out like the, the flat portion of, of a bowl and it's just it just doesn't work for me because I want in the area where I'm going to set up garage workshop then I'm going to move towards getting a, a smeltery uh, a printing factory well a printing a component printing factory but then I want like an actual assembly plant that is going to build uh that is going to build various components for, that's going to build like manufacture completed projects so I can ship it out into outer space. And part of that will be like, I'm, in my head, I'm envisioning like I'm gonna have multiple printers for various jobs. So some of it will be, um, some of it will be just like cargo pods so I can get material up and down and some of it will be, oh, this is for sending parts of a space station into space. Because I think that would be cool uh, to do. I guess that is a little Kerbal, Kerbal-esque maybe. But I think it adds a certain amount of difficulty to build sections of a space station and then send it up. Because uh, the, the best way to do that in, in Kerbal... Uh, from what I've seen, I've, I haven't really played. I haven't really played Kerbal myself, but I watched. I watched Scott Manley's whole Interstellar thing. That was a a beautiful journey. In in Space Engineers, like Kerbal, you have to kind of strut things. In in Space Engineers, you got to kind of have your whole system static. So I can, I can kind of like build different pieces and think about where I want them to go in order to how, how I want them assembled on top of the booster so that they arrive then I'm gonna need uh, various satellites and various drones to move them around and put them together and I do believe I have the Zardos uh, a pathway connector on this mod list so that'll be really cool because eventually I'll get to a point where I can sort of fly up to the space station and then space station will be where I like control planetary drones and uh, intraplanetary drones and it'll be kind of cool 
And then once I get super, super far along, get like an actual ship uh, assembly, like raw, big ideas, but one step at a time. Speaking of one step, I think I found my place. This area is remarkably flat. It kind of tapers towards the, the back of these two, uh, I don't know, these, I don't think, I wouldn't call these mountains. I would call these like really large hills. This is a very deep, hilly area. It reminds me of driving through like West Virginia. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to set up here. And I kind of thought about what I should call it. And in the end, I came up with Steel Valley. Two hours of exploring later, and I am on the complete opposite side of the trade station lake, where I have the uh, Twin Peaks named, and I ran into a crap ton of glitches. Uh, I started running into ghost uh, objects, and the vehicle started jumping everywhere, and then I couldn't turn my wheels. So I had to do some investigation to figure out what in the Sam Hill was going on. And in the end, it seems to be, I found a, a thread from four years ago that sometimes after major updates, depending on how much voxels you have on your save, you can start running into ghost issues. So I had to sort of search around and figure out what the problem was uh, on the like I, I had too many voxels going on so I looked around and I didn't know this at the time but the boulders on the planet are actually saved under asteroids and I don't know how that works in the programming but from what it seems like because I have because I have so many opened boulders, so many boulders that I've worked on, the system was acting like I was loading in a whole bunch of asteroids really close together. That's what I think it was doing, but I'm not 100% sure. In the end, the only solution was to go in and manually delete uh, boulders that I had cleared out. And once I did that, my ghost issues uh, completely vanished. But I also uh, <laughs> I also decided to uh, download the uh, the, mo the two most recent DLCs to see if that fixed things. Um, just to add, just to throw extra shenanigans onto the whole fire. And they downloaded, and everything seems to be working fine. So. I can go ahead with the Let's Play. I don't have to start over or do anything weird like that. But this has just been kind of a announcement slash uh, warning. Uh, all right, let's get back to the show. And after a bit more driving, I arrive back at the mobile refinery. And it is time to go ahead and take this uh, little trailer over to a new boulder, which uh, I went ahead and... I think I've already deleted the one that I just mined out. But, you know, at the new one, I guess I'll have to delete that one as well. Very, very odd bug to me. But uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a programmer. I'm just a basic chemist. So what do I know about how all that shenanigans works? All right, we get everything locked in. I, I save because I am very, very worried about crashing all of this. Now it's time to drive. But uh, I feel I f I'm worried about a little bit of tug from the wheels in the back. And uh, eventually I'm going to pause here and be like, okay, let me, let me double check all these wheels. Let me make sure all of this is good to go. And then, of course, because I'm connected to the mobile refinery, uh, I can't access the trailer's remote control from the remote control list, which, frankly... That actually bugs me. That actually, I, I think that's a really, uh, I don't think that's very useful. I, I think, 
at some level, yes. If you're if you're running with a crap ton of of uh, drones and stuff, sure, that's useful. But at the same, this is this is the thing that I talked about way long ago. I wish there was some kind of folder system on the control panel so that I could move uh, less vital information out of my major awareness. So I could put all of a vehicle's uh, components, all of its active components, into a folder in the control panel that just closes that all up, and then I can focus on whatever vehicle is actually important. I, I wish I could have, like, all of my... Once I get stationary satellites, and they're like, I'm never going to move them again, I wish I could put those into a file that just said, oh, these are your stationary satellites. You don't need to, um, you don't need to look at them again. They'll just be there unless I need to call one up and see, or, or I need to open the file and see where in my uh, communications network the satellites have gone down. But there's just, there's just these little extra organization things that I wish was there. And I think one of the reasons why they're not there is because it's not really how people play space engineers. It's because uh, it's a sandbox game. So everybody gets to make their own fun, which is the key number one selling point. Everybody gets to make their own fun their own way. That's very cool. But at the same time, you know, a guy like me that does this weird sort of play that is, like, I enjoy playing the game this way, as well as I think it's cool to make a series where I play the game this way. It's it's not what everybody else does. It's not the most popular thing. So I understand why it's not a feature. I don't even know if it's a mod. If it is a mod, I really hope someone tells me in the comments, please tell me so that I can uh, stop uh, complaining about this um, I think I've only complained about it maybe three times in 18 three, two or three times in 18 episodes so I'm not whining I'm not whining three times over the course of like almost two months that's pretty good it's pretty good um, but yeah so here I am driving and yeah as I said last episode, I don't know how to drive with a trailer. I vaguely, and when I say vaguely, I mean very vaguely, remember having to take my driving, uh, my driving test. Not the state, not the state license one, but like my actual Virginia, uh, you know, I was like 16 or whatever, driver's, driver's manual driving test. And I remember it did have a section on how to drive trailers but it's not like we actually did anything so you know the that was the weirdest experience ever being in driving school it was just uh it, they were the they were the oddest bunch and uh i had two uh, two great experiences there that have stuck with me forever the first one was the uh, the bipolar chick who had some kind of uh, episode, and so she just ran away. She like she walked out of the driving school, walked out of the little building we out of the classroom. Then she walked out of the building we were in, and hightailed it like behind some bank, and she's just sitting there on next to the the brownstone just chilling. And I'm like, what in the world? This is my first time dealing with this. Like, this just didn't happen at the, the school I was at. There was nobody who was that level of bipolar or, you know, the manic depressive stuff. That was very, very interesting. But the other fun part was we had taken a break in the middle of the class and gone to a gas station and to, to get some snacks. And I see this guy in line, and I think he's one of, I think he's one of the fellow classmates, but he's not. He's actually a complete stranger. I mistook him for somebody else, and we start talking. Turns out he's Amish. He's he uh, he had recently f finished um, Yamspringer, 
decided not to go back and he was making uh his family recipe of i think it was like barley pancakes with honey and so he was there getting honey or uh honey or syrup so that he and his girlfriend could have could have these homemade pancakes it was a very it was a very strange conversation but i was I always seem to manage to do that. Like I, I go to the coffee shop over here where I live now in um, in the Midwest, and I go over there, and strange people come and talk to me all the time. And it's like, man, this is this is very weird. But they don't do that at the laundry shop. I found that out. They don't do that at the laundry shop, which I'm kind of glad, because <laughs> <laughs> while I got my laundry going, I don't want to talk to nobody. You know, at the coffee shop, I got some coffee, I got my computer, you know, I can chat, I can listen, I can remember all these stories. All right, I get to the top of this ridge, and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, that's close enough. Well, that's fine, that's fine. And, but no, it's it's not fine. This is way, way too far away. I, I gotta manually mine, but past me is like, no, 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 no. This is okay. This is fine. This is fine. Past me is is not. Past me is not as smart as current me, and current me is definitely not as smart as future me. Future me, that guy. He's he's real class. Current me, eh, I'm all right. Past me, what what a lump of coal. <laughs> that was so dumb. All right, I'm keeping it in there. I'm keeping it in there. Y'all could call me crazy or whatever. So yeah, I fly over. I already am like, yeah, that's kind of a trek. I don't like that. So I decide I'm going to move the boar pig, uh, boar pug. I keep calling it the boar pig the last two days, and it's the boar pug. I'm going to move that sucker out of the way. I, I went to the trade station and picked up a whole bunch of metal. So I've done that a few times. I've gone to the trade station. Instead of mining the iron, I just went ahead and bought out like all of the ingots they had. I think I may have gotten ten or so uh ten or so megagrams that way. Not not a whole lot. Anyways, uh, a little uh a little trying to drive a trailer backwards uh while I have the solar array out. Um, this is a great idea. This is a great plan. I highly recommend this to everybody. Um, I'm still, I'm still trying to get used to how to make the the trailer work that I want to, and I think I've figured out that I I kind of have to do the wheels uh, opposite to how I want to, in order to get the the trailer to move in that direction, which is a little. It's very much counterintuitive because the, I mean, the only time I've really seen someone back up a trailer is my uncle or Dukes of Hazards, and Dukes of Hazard that was like one episode from, oh god, man, it was before it was during high school, so yeah, that was when Netflix came out. So Dad got all of the Dukes of Hazard, and I watched every single season of Dukes of Hazard, but that was a really good time. And I really enjoyed it. So using that kind of mental image, I was able to sort of park and get everything set up. But today, that's going to end the show for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and for next episode, we're going to get a whole bunch of steel plates together. We're going to go back to Steel Valley, start working on the garage, get ready to actually advance to the next level. Until then, like Share, subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time. Cheers.